to 7 o'clock tonight. So let's get started. We've got uh, a busy morning here. Uh, we've got a lot of rock star tech people here today. And uh, here, the champion of technology in BC, I want to introduce the Minister of Technology, Innovation and Citizen Services, the Honourable Amrik Firk. Give him a big hand. Thank you very much, Dad, thank, you. thank you, Mike. Well, uh, Mike, thank you very much for the introduction and, and all you friends of curiosity and critical thinking, welcome. Minister Baines, welcome again to, to British Columbia where Canada starts here, we'd like to say. Um, it, it's an honour to be on the traditional territories of Coast Salish and recognize the Musqueam, the Salyutooth and the Squamish people, folks. We're as a tradition of government to recognize, look over our shoulder, recognize the past, and we, we thank them. So welcome to the second day of the Tech Summit, um, the largest gathering, not only in British Columbia, the largest gathering in Canada of, of a technology sector. It's absolutely incredible. And, and, and innovation is indeed fueling technology sector in every region of our province. And, and it's, uh, I take such pleasure in being a champion of, of this industry so, that I believe in so wholeheartedly. And when I look around the room in BC, I see the face of Canada reflected right here. The fact that every language, every city, every country, and perhaps every province and every other state is reflected in our, in our face. We're, we're a country and a province that respects diversity, respects, that respects language, respects whether you pray to the east or the west. That's BC and that's Canada. And that's our industry as well. It's got a unique blend of scientific curiosity and it's got a unique blend of business acumen. It's got an equal mixture of brains and heart. And it's collectively punching above its weight in the global world. That's BC's tech scene. It's having a profound and a positive impact on every industry in our society. And it's transforming, I like to think it's transforming not only our province, our country, but it's transforming the world right from here in British Columbia. So this is second the tech summit is a celebration uh, inspired by you. Uh, your passion, your hard work, uh, your preservation, your, your perseverance. And that's why we have a tech sector worth celebrating. And, and your, your hard work was recognized in the 2017 Global Startup uh, Ecosystem Report. So we are four million people out of four and a half billion on the planet. And you know, we were just recognized yesterday as the 15th largest cluster in the world. That's worth celebrating. That's worth a clap, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> and BC was recognized just yesterday as having the number one tech ecosystem in Canada as well. Pretty darn good. <laughs> and here's, here's a couple of quotes. Here's a couple of quotes from, you know, this is not government saying this. This is an independent third body that Vancouver is consistently named as the one of the top worldwide cities for livability, quality of life, and one of Canada's top, it's not one of Canada's, it is Canada's top startup city. The city's legacy industries are well established and we have the legacy industries. The, the older companies have started, but it's a top three in the world in clean tech clusters as well. And the clean tech report just came out a few days ago as well. It is 30% of Canada's clean tech industry is right here in our own backyard. Isn't that phenomenal? One of the top in the world and the top in the country right here in our own backyard. It's got one of the top 20 global fintech centers, financial centers here in British Columbia. A global film and production center that's near the top in the world of visual effects and animation. Gee, we have a lot to be proud of, don't we? And it's growing at an incredible, unprecedented rate. Uh, so here's the numbers right now. For the first time, we're over 100,000 families in British Columbia are putting their daily bread or their daily roti on the table because of the tech sector. That's BC right now. And here's the early indicators. And, and, my ministry also handles BC stats as well too. The latest numbers is that we have 106,000 
families that are employed in the tech space in this province. And the moment I said 106,000, I was wrong. Because the company pivoted. And new ones started in that garage or that basement. And a new one was acquired and a couple came together. And the number may be 106,020. By this afternoon, it may be 106,030. That's the growth that I'm seeing. Tech in BC now employs more than oil, gas, mining, and forestry combined. That's the size of your space in this province right now. Bunch of different verticals, all the way from clean tech, life sciences, ICT, wireless, gamers, entertainment, AR, VR, and the list goes on. It's thriving. And for the five consecutive years, tech salaries have risen 70%, 75% higher than the average industrial wage in BC. And this is more than a trend line. It's getting a lot of traction. It's having positive effects in industries all across the province as well. And uh, I, I don't think government did this. We listened to you, and you did this. And we want to be the enabler, the catalyst to help you grow and become stronger. So in 2016, uh, our government uh, consulted with the tech sector very extensively. And I see some of the presidents and CEOs of a tech space. I see the, for, the president of the Premier's Tech Council. We consulted with the industry to determine what role could we play? How could we become a catalyst to support you as an industry? And it was through that process that the industry, not government, but industry identified its priorities and initiatives that would help you become stronger. And that became the backbone of our tech strategy. And it was a key component of our jobs plan to build a competitive, diversified, expert or export-oriented economy, and not only right here within a kilometer, not only in Vancouver, but all across the province. Or we released our first tech, uh, tech strategy last year in January. It's an evolving strategy. It's not a mission accomplished. It's a mission in progress. And so it was the first of its kind in the country, and it will be the first of many to come. It's based on three pillars, capital, talent, and markets. Not rocket science. This is exactly what the, the tech sector wanted. And there's 50 strategies completed or underway, and they'll always be underway, because we, we're never done. And yesterday, let me recap, uh, how many were in the crowd when the Premier announced a whole bunch of new initiatives? Were a lot of people in the crowd yesterday there? What did you guys think? Some pretty good initiatives? Oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> president Santa Ano says it was real positive. The president of UBC here, folks. Um, it had a goal in mind. How do we take small and medium-sized tech companies and how do you make the small into medium and the medium into large and the large into international? How do you grow them big and how do you keep them home? How do you allow them to get access into world markets? How do you get them access into startup funding? How do you have them benefit from research? How do you help them on commercialization and grow and become larger? So you heard yesterday, so to deepen the talent, uh, the tech talent fuel, uh, pool, we're going to add 1,000 new tech-specific university positions every year. That's a commitment the Premier made yesterday. The commitment the Premier also made yesterday was that we're going to double the number of tech co-ops. Because you, as the industry, said, we need students that understand the space, that have some experience while they're going to college and university and, and our technical institutions. You need experiential students. So we, we doubled the number of tech co-ops. You don't have to be a techie. You could be an accountant working for a tech company. In the behavioral sciences, working for a tech company. But we're going to double the number of those tech co-ops annually. My Tax is an excellent program. It's national where you're taking graduate level programs and partnering with a university and industry. We're doubling that as well, too. We've created a number of BC uh, search and technology research chairs. That was a commitment made as well. And we made a number of enhancements of tax credits to make sure it's, it's an investment. It's an investment to grow opportunities for the next generation, for the students that are sitting here. And last year, we announced, we announced a BC Developers Exchange as well. It's a, it's a kind of an experiment, uh, how you take a tech startup and, and, and get the idea off the ground. 
So we've got uh, 12 of our public sector organizations have got involved in that developers exchange. We developed a, an ideas fund within government to encourage new innovative tech products to be purchased by government. Here's a new program we're going to announce today. So I did some previous ones that the Premier announced. In different parts of the world, there are startup and residence programs where you take tech companies, you embed them into government. And that's what you as a tech space said. So we're starting a startup and residence program right here in British Columbia. It's modeled after a very successful program in San Francisco to co-develop, test, and launch solutions to public sector challenges. So the request for proposals is going out, or it might have even gone already, where we take startup tech companies and we embed them in various ministries. And they solve real life, real world government value propositions. And then six or 10 or months or a year later, you push them out of the nest and they go back to forth to, to go to the private space and prosper. That's starting right away. Yesterday, we also announced we're expanding our trade and investment offices in Seattle and in Silicon Valley to increase investment in BC. But the investment is not all about capital. The investment is human capital as well. That was announced yesterday as well. And it's all about also enticing tech companies to come to BC, to connect with BC. And you know, the certain the topic of immigration and what's happening south of the border is very much top of mind. And I think in a very respectful way, we're hearing not only anecdotally, there's all sorts of companies that want to come to relocate here. And we have Canada's representatives in Silicon Valley. And I see our Consul General, Brandon, can you stand up? We have a Consul General, Brandon Lee here. He's our Consul General of Canada in Silicon Valley. So Brandon's our secret, he's our secret weapon in Silicon Valley for companies there that want to come here. But seek out Brandon afterwards. He's also here for all of you that want to find better north-south connections as well into those American markets well. Let's make him work for us. <laughs> now, it's, this strategy is all about facilitating matchmaking as well. So we're, we're, we're matchmakers in the traditional sense. So last year we had 228 B2B meetings. How we take a small startup tech company, sit them right in front of every government buyer and say, what's your value prop? I have a product I think you need to purchase. They don't have to navigate the complexities of government. We sit them right across the table. It's like speed dating. You get five minutes. With, and so we're doing several hundred of those this year once again. There's, I believe, close, almost 200 companies, small and large, that are pitching to government right here at this summit. It's happening concurrently as we speak here. And I know some of you are interested in uh, our new government province-wide procurement changes that are coming as well here. Uh, we want to work on that as well. We're, we're looking at a new kind of service, how we connect the tech space and government. Uh, yesterday, we also talked about data. And the Premier announced uh, yesterday that we're going to have a center for data innovation in the province, a trusted, secure platform to make new discoveries with government data to better support public policy decisions. It's going to transform and personalize government uh, services for all British Columbians. That's not all we're doing. And there's a couple of new initiatives that uh, I can also talk about here. So, uh, my ministry has conduct of a number of accelerators across the province, and we're at 14 from agri-tech to wireless to a whole bunch of spaces, and they're all over the province. But we're announcing a new accelerator this morning as well. You're the first to hear it. The new accelerator, and it's about geographical variety across the province, is going to be based in Surrey. Our new accelerator is going to work within the existing health technology corridor right beside Surrey Memorial Hospital. And the new Innovation Boulevard Health Tech Accelerator is going to specialize exclusively in the commercialization of medical devices, software, and processes. <laughs> and he's here, here's some good news, more good news. And I see a representative of Surrey sitting right there. Hi, Larry. <laughs> um, there's a huge component. IBM is partnering with us on that as well, too. 
It's going to partner with the Health Tech Innovation Foundation to provide all the accelerator participants, whoever's involved in this accelerator, is going to get free access to all of IBM's key software platforms. Uh, and yes, that's free for all those powerful techniques. They're going to use IBM's uh, Bluemix hybrid cloud development platform and IBM Watson while they're developing their product. I think uh, that's worth, uh, thank you very much IBM for that offer as well too. So these technologies are gonna leverage the whole area of fast development of BC's health tech companies. It's gonna be absolutely fabulous. It's gonna give that smart, smart med tech company uh, the accelerated path to solve not only BC, but Canada's healthcare challenges right here from BC. Um, for example, you know, the terrible consequences of the, the opiate crisis that we're all facing right now. But when you put that together, we can look at that, use IBM Watson, use all those services, and can we arrive at different results? So the new health tech accelerator is the only one of its kind in Western Canada. So here's the broader picture of the provinces. We're at 9,000 companies. And the moment I say that, as I said, that's wrong as well, because two more formed. About two thirds of them are in the lower mainland of British Columbia. And that, that makes sense. Two thirds of the population is also here as well. But we have tech companies that are located all throughout the province of BC. And you know, wherever they set up, they make such a positive impact on the local economy uh, by what they do and how they interact. And while we certainly want to see more companies in the lower mainland of British Columbia, we also want to see more tech companies all across, whether it's in the north or in the Kootenays or on Vancouver Island. Uh, so we also announced a rural economic strategy so we can benefit all corners of this province. Access to capital, you know, with, with the 14 innovator accelerators that we have, well, we've got, we got 15 now as of this morning. And so this winter, our Crown Agency, British Columbia Innovation Council, the Crown Agency that has put on this summit, has done regional innovation opportunities tours all across the province. And here's, here's when I talked to one participant, they saw, geez, the tech space can get involved in the natural resources sector. And people from the natural resources sector said, geez, we didn't realize how much we can interact with this. It's, it provided an excellent networking opportunity. So technology impacts all our industries, traditional and non-traditional. And as we move forward, we're going to see that symbiotic relationship is only going to, going to increase. And I'll use the example of Canfor. Uh, Minister made, Baines made an announcement of uh, funding to Canfor. But Canfor relies, and traditional forestry company, relies on new technologies and innovation to remain not BC's, not Canada's, but one of the world's largest producers of sustainable lumber, pulp and paper. And it's a leader in bioenergy production because you have traditional industry embedded in a symbiotic relation with technology. And likewise, technology is transforming our agriculture sector. And you're gonna learn more about that later on. Uh, this uh, past uh, December, 44 innovators, small agri-tech companies, did, a, did an agri-tech uh, innovation challenge. And so there's a panel of experts that are going to decide from a number of four categories who won that. There's going to be a $20,000 prize for each of those. And that's going to be done in room 109 downstairs at 3 o'clock today. That's another way that we can help facilitate one of the tech spaces. And the real message I want to leave you with uh, as I work toward my conclusion is that uh, tech is becoming our new competitive edge. And I was with a room of thought leaders last night, and President Ono was there with me, and, and as was Bill Tam, the CEO of the BC Tech Association. And the, the discussion was, how do we rebrand BC? Is it beyond the beautiful? Is it the bold and the beautiful? I think there's a, a soap opera that says that. Is it bold and beautiful and brainy? But it's a competitive edge. It's a new competitive edge we have. And there's technology industries that, that are taking place right here that are changing the world. You know, we still have the breathtaking scenery. You only have to look over here, the mountains, and the, the snow caps on the top, the clean water, the tall trees, and the wide open spaces. That's also our value proposition. And that's not going to change. We still have the best talent, the best taxes. You know, we happen to have a time zone. We're going to take credit for that, too. The time zone that meshes with the west coast of the U.S. where our markets as well as are. We have world-class healthcare. 
don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Low taxes, great schools, and any category that come top one, two, three, four in the world in outcomes, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. That's our competitive advantage, but we add to that technology. It's, it's fundamental. You already get it, you live it. That's what you do every day. So if any of you are interested in helping out on a larger scale, here's another quick. I'm hiring a new chief information officer. Um, my chief information officer is retiring this year, and I want this room to help me find a new chief information officer for government. What should that role be? What should they do? And maybe that applicant is sitting right in here today. Think about that as well. So I want to thank you uh, for your spirit of innovation and, and, and putting BC on the map. We are one part of one beautiful country, but we can proudly say, and let's be a little bit more prouder. We're humble Canadians, we're humble British Columbians. You know, West Coast, we're a little bit more relaxed than the East Coast maybe, right? But let's be a little prouder and louder in the fact that we can change the world. We can have discoveries right here in this small province of four and a half million people that can change a life on the other side of the country or the other side of the planet. Uh, and it, we're in a province, as I started out, that respects diversity. Whether you pray to the east or you pray to the west or respect of where you came from and where your father was born. In a province where when you go out on the street, it's just as appropriate for you to see a hello, or a ni hao, or a sasrikal, or a namaste, or a she she, or da hao, or zai jian. With that, folks, uh, the best place in the country and the best place in the world to live, go forth and prosper. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Minister uh, Verk. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll Snapchat you later about that uh, position. <laughs>